Hey dudes, Crazy here, back into Marvel's Avengers with another build guide and today we're gonna take a look at a really awesome one for Thor. Everything that I'm about to show you is going to be for the end game and to be more specific on challenge 4, so all of the footage has been filmed in the Elite Heroic Hive on the challenge 4, which by the way is so freaking trivial with a Thor build like this one that you're not even gonna believe it. So let's jump right into it with all of the details and as always a thumbs up on this video would also be super appreciated. It. Anyway, let's get started with some of the stats and gear that you can see right here. Of course, the build is not fully finalized yet, but even in its current state, it absolutely shreds. Challenge for Elite Heroic Hives and pretty much anything that you throw at it. So two of the most important stats that we're focusing on with this build are going to be Might and Valor. This is a melee-centric build since it takes advantage of Thor's really high and powerful heavy power attacks, especially since these are the highest damage dealers in the game right now and also some of the best stunners against most of the enemies so specifically I'm aiming for at least 200 might with this build and at least 300 valor valor is going to be especially useful since this both increases your critical damage and as I've said in yesterday's video this is the main stat that you're looking for if you want to pull really really large numbers and not just that it also makes all of your heroics with Thor to deal huge amounts of damage and this means that you're going to absolutely shred and kill almost anything in the game even with only one cast but this doesn't mean you should neglect that resolve and actually you should have something like a minor artifact that's exclusively available only with resolve on it so that you can switch to it in case you're going into elite heroic hives and you don't want to get one or two shot it in this case i'm recommending at least 120 of that resolve so that you can get over 15,000 hp but don't worry we have a lot more survival ability with this build and I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit. Now as far as the basic combos and attacks go, here are your main abilities. Of course, Thor doesn't have the most complicated, let's just say, combos, but he does have some of the most powerful in the game. The first one and the one that you will use most often to deal high damage and stun the enemies right away is your Storm Striker Heavy Power Attack. This is even better in combination with Bring the Thunder Upgrade, so basically when you're casting that Storm Striker, also also hold down the intrinsic button just before the hammer lands on the ground to energize it and deal three additional lightning strikes on the target for really high additional damage and those really awesome lightning strikes on the target. The second one is going to be your hammer spin as well as all of its upgrades. This is an even higher damage dealer but it's also a very long chain of combos that you can only pull off in certain situations. So the fact that this is a high damage means that you should only use it against targets that are immobilized, severely slowed down and even more so if they don't pay attention to you, otherwise you're just going to have to interrupt the chain of attacks and you will lose a ton of DPS or even better you might open yourself up to incoming damage if you don't pay attention to that. So just use this when the enemy is exposed and isn't attacking you at all. The third one is going to be a ranged one called the power of Uru, this is an intrinsic upgrade and basically you can just pin a target against the ground and then zap it with the intrinsic bond by tapping it and this is both going to deal really high damage both to it and to every enemy that is around it. It's also the main one that you see me using from afar when trying to take down enemies and putting them under a stun or interrupt before they get to attack me. It is dependent on precision though so if you want it to deal even higher damage you're going to want to stack more precision. The only other thing that I'm going to focus on here is the overcharge since this is also very important for Thor and it's something that is going to become even better once we go into the other skill pages. So performing attacks in quick succession will build your intrinsic bar at the top. When it becomes fully filled as well as the additional other smaller bar right next to it, you become overcharged at which point your Odin force is going to stay activated for as long as you are overcharged. So basically what this means is that you're going to deal that additional lightning strike to enemies that might attack you as a form of counter. Keep this in mind once we reach the third skill page because there are some abilities over there that actually make it really powerful. But in the meantime we're gonna focus on the heroics and their upgrades since there's a few things you should know about them. You can also go ahead and copy them down since I'm going to go through these briefly. For the Warrior's Fury I went with Emer's Wrath. This gives a nice party-wide 25% damage increase but only if your teammates are nearby so this can be a really awesome damage 
boost. For the other ones you have the option between Hell's Anger if you want to get additional crit damage and crit chance for everybody that is affected by it or otherwise you can go with Asgard's Fortitude if you want to have additional heroic orbs. I would only go with Asgard's Fortitude only if my party doesn't provide enough heroic orbs as it is so I would go with this one but otherwise I would pick Hell's Anger. For the God Blast I went with Sons of Elders God for that additional cryo effect. In fact you will see me stacking cryo effects both on this and the heroic ultimate as well since it's so damn OP against literally anything in the game so both bosses and regular enemies. For the second one you can pretty much go with anything you want to it's your choice you can go with the first one that just gives you more damage and stun against enemies that are shocked but you do need to shock them first with some abilities. You can also go with the second one that deals 20% additional damage if you're overcharged while casting this ability or if you're like me and you prefer this one I went with the God Blast since this makes it much faster to refund since it gives me 5% heroic energy back for each enemy that I defeat with this ability and since it's so high damage you're going to constantly defeat a lot of them so it's going to recharge much faster on top of all of the heroic orbs that you're getting anyway. For the Bifrost ultimate here are some of the best options personally I went with the cryo upgrade since again I really want to go with that theme and since it's so powerful but you can also go with the burn effect since it can also be quite damaging. For the other three you either have the option to get a healing once you come out of the Bifrost or get overcharged once you come out of the Bifrost. It depends on what type of content you're clearing if you go into an elite heroic hive I recommend the healing since this is a nice way to both avoid damage and come full HP from the other side or otherwise if you want to constantly be overcharged you can also go with the overcharged ability. What I do recommend on the Bifrost is to only activate it if the circle is red to deal that additional 50% more damage from the precision Bifrost effect so just keep that in mind when you're pulling it. Now for the rest of the tree that we have in the mastery there's not too much to talk about over here except a few of them so I'm going to focus on these ones. And the first one that I would say is a must is the heroic takedown mastery. This should be a staple for any build since it gives your takedowns the chance to spawn heroic orbs and you will need that around the clock so invest points into that. Otherwise I went with the guard breaker in the range tree since this lets me completely bypass any shields and I can just pin down almost any enemy in the game with the exception of mini bosses and adeptoids and whatnot. Now in the intrinsic ability and intrinsic overcharge trees is when it becomes a little bit more interesting. In the first one I well you have an option between ionic bolts or forceful will and this is basically how this works. If you go with ionic bolts it's basically more damage because you deal additional zaps of lightning to enemies if you defeat them while Odin force is activated. So for example if you pull that overcharged heavy attack you can basically do that and it's going to deal that additional strike of lightning. But otherwise if you feel that you're not surviving enough or if you don't have enough HP to regen you can go with the force of will. This gives you a 1.2% healing per hit but since most of your abilities are AoE you can just strike multiple enemies at the same time even with one ability and you can get like 10% HP back just from one simple attack. So I recommend this one if you're going up against a singular boss if you don't have enough HP if you don't survive for long or if you don't find enough willpower or on the ground to pick off. From here on I just went with a couple of points that increase my Odin force energy and reduce its overall energy cost and the ones that are actually more important are going to be in the last tree right here in the intrinsic overcharge. On the left side you're going to want to get the lightning field since this is going to make you spawn a ton of lightning strikes when you're overcharged which is going to cause this really awesome effect right here. As you can see all of the enemies get zapped for really really high damage. Those zapped can deal more damage than your regular attacks so this means that you're constantly pulling off that kind of damage. The other ones that I went with are the 50% reduction to damage so really nice resistance over there and the final one is this one that provides 15% more damage when I'm actually overcharged and this provides it to all of my damage that I'm dealing. But what you need to keep in mind is the fact that all of these in the intrinsic overcharge actually work with your warrior's fury because guess what? your support heroic actually overcharges you too. And this is also the
the reason why you're seeing me surviving for this long is because I'm also getting that charge resistance for that additional 50% resistance to incoming damage. So basically during that support heroic you're almost invincible against any type of incoming damage. You have so much survivability it's going to be absolutely crazy. Outside of these there's not much to cover except for some of the gear. The only thing that I would recommend here is to go for as much damage perks as possible. So damage buff, adept buff, rampage buff, anything that provides a reliable way to get that damage buff is going to be amazing since that increases your critical chance and your melee rating too. Um, outside of this I recommend an electric inscription, it makes your heavy power attacks to deal additional shock so you're going to pull off heavy power attacks constantly and now they also deal extra status damage and additional critical damage stacked on the target and finally the other one that I recommend is the Odin Force Flare for 120 plus percent critical damage increase from Odin Force attacks. Again remember that in order to have this activated you have to be under the effect of the Odin Force or under the effect of the overcharge. And that is pretty much it with the build. This is going to deal huge amount of damage as you can see even in challenge 4 on the highest difficulty and against the toughest enemies in the game you can basically just a few shot them and they are on the ground and even if not you can just completely wreck them even with a build that is semi decent but this is it with the build thank you so much for watching if you have anything that is a suggestion for this build or if you have any other alternatives let me know down below in the meantime thank you so much and i'm gonna see you guys in the next one